video is sponsored by Formation. If you're a junior or mid-level engineer who wants to land a job at a FANG level company, then stick around to hear more about the Formation's program or learn more at the link in the description box. About a year after graduating from college, I decided to move from my hometown of San Diego, California to the San Francisco Bay Area, AKA the Hollywood of the tech industry. It would be my first time living outside of Southern California as an adult. And so naturally I was really excited and curious as to what life might be like in the Bay. After all, it was home to many great things like Pixar, Apple, the gay rights movement, good sourdough bread, and was also where my husband Scott grew up. But especially being a software engineer, I knew that this is where the tech industry was born and continued to thrive. And just more than anything, I wanted to know what the whole fuss was about. I heard it was one of the best places to grow your tech career and that there was nowhere else in the world like it. And so with my husband Scott and our dog Kona, we moved to a spot that was five to 15 minutes away from the Facebook, Google, Apple, and Netflix headquarters and we lived there for about five years. During my time there, I worked at three different jobs, learned to use the Caltrain for my commute, found every coffee shop in Soma, started my YouTube channel, forged lifetime friendships, hiked gorgeous landscapes unique to the area, got married, spent time with my in-laws, ate a lot of really, really great food, and worked a lot. But living in the Bay wasn't exactly a breeze either. The rent prices were some of the highest in the country, which meant that we could never move out of our rent controlled home. And because the tech industry had created large income disparities, especially within the local community, we were reminded of those negative impacts daily. And this is more of a first world problem, but because all of our friends who worked in tech were always really motivated and career driven and therefore busy, we often scheduled our hangouts more than a month in advance which usually meant that we would drive an hour each way to get up to the city just to chill. Luckily, both my husband and I had tech salaries, and so we were privileged enough to have a lot of options and opportunities, but it didn't sit super well with us that even those that were born and bred there didn't have the same options to live and thrive in the Bay Area. So sure, our careers took off and we had a lot of happy moments, but we knew that there was someplace else that aligned more with our lifestyle and vibe overall to make us happier. So in 2020, when the pandemic hit, we decided to move back to San Diego. In fact, my husband actually always wanted to stay in San Diego. So the fact that he came up and lived with me up there for five years is something that I will always love him for. So thank you, Scotty. So we bought our house at a fraction of the price of a comparable home in the Bay Area and moved out of Silicon Valley. I made a video a few months after the move about how it felt to leave the Bay and what noticeable changes there were in my attitude and lifestyle. I'm absolutely happier having made the move and I'm glad that I both spent time time in the Bay and also that I don't live there anymore. But if I were to start my career today in tech, would it be the best idea to move to Silicon Valley or more broadly the San Francisco Bay Area? Or are there other cities that are better to move to in this post-pandemic remote work culture world? What is it even about the Bay Area that makes it such an important place for technology? I mean, how did it even start there to begin with? These questions have been rattling in my head as I approach the two year mark of moving out. So I decided to look into it. I looked into the history and culture of Silicon Valley, how it's changed in relation to the pandemic, and whether it's still the best place to move to for a tech career. The San Francisco Bay Area has a rich history. Originally settled by the Ohlone people, it was a part of Spain, then Mexico, then became a part of the United States in 1848. Literally the year after, the gold rush, which peaked in 1849, brought about 300,000 new people from across the states and abroad to California, all hoping to strike gold. This brought a ton of wealth to the area and many iconically Bay Area things like Wells Fargo, Stanford University, Victorian houses, and Golden Gate Park were created during this time. The area continued to evolve even after a devastating earthquake in 1906, which left much of the city in ruins. The city rebuilt quickly and withstood the Great Depression, built the Golden Gate Bridge, and became an important military hub during World War II. Now, after the war, while San Francisco became home to the hippie and counterculture movement and the gay rights movement, 
the tech industry was having its early beginnings in the city of Palo Alto, about 30 minutes south of San Francisco. Palo Alto is the home of Stanford University, whose provost at the time was a man named Frederick Turman. He was a leader in research for vacuum tubes, circuits, and instrumentation, which served as a basis for much of the technology in radio, TV, telephones, and early computers. He even had a hand in the founding of Hewlett Packard, whose founders were both students of his, and during his time as dean, he encouraged the university's faculty and alumni to start their own companies, which marks the beginnings of the entrepreneurial spirit of Silicon Valley. Around the same time, a man named William Shockley was inventing the transistor and moved to Mountain View, California, the town right next to Palo Alto, to found Shockley Semiconductor Labs, which worked on the first silicon semiconductor devices, which gave Silicon Valley its name. He went on to receive a Nobel Prize in physics, which apparently made him so inflated with ego that he became incredibly difficult to work with. In fact, it gave birth to a group of folks called the Traitorous Eight, who left Shockley Semiconductor to form Fairchild Semiconductor. They were the ones that really established the Bay Area as the home for silicon semiconductors, even though other cities like Boston, Camden, and New York had far more active transistor companies than the Bay. After the success of Fairchild, many of their founders and former employees went on to invest in companies that hit big. In fact, a study found that 70% of the Valley's public firms can be traced back to Fairchild Semiconductor, and their combined value represented more than $2.1 trillion at the time of the study. Of course, this starts to bring us to the modern day beginnings of the tech industry as we know it. The dot-com era saw the creation of companies like Amazon, Yahoo, eBay, Netscape, GeoCities, and more. And then it crashed in 2000, which really led to our current era of technology. So, what is modern day Silicon Valley like now? Well, when we look at the geography of the San Francisco Bay Area, there's actually five distinct counties that make up the region. Marin County, Alameda County, San Mateo County, Santa Clara County, and San Francisco County, and of course, that giant bay right in the middle of it all with mountain ranges bordering each. Now, I think each county has a really unique vibe to it, which really just makes the Bay Area all that more special. Depending on your lifestyle, there's kind of something for everyone in the Bay, so long as you can afford it. The first, of course, is San Francisco County, which only has the city of San Francisco in it, which is seven miles long and seven miles wide. All the neighborhoods have something different to offer and is the best place in the Bay to get that city, urban living feel. Marin County includes some of the most beautiful nature in the Bay, which means that it also comes at a high cost. It's also not the most accessible part of the Bay, so not many tech folks move there unless they're right across the water from San Francisco. Alameda County is basically the East Bay Area. It's got famous cities like Oakland and Berkeley and has a more counterculture vibe to it than other parts of the Bay Area. San Mateo County is the peninsula, which is bordered by the bay itself and the mountains to the west. Many folks who live here tend to be families with the parents' commuter either north to San Francisco or south to the South Bay for their tech jobs. And then there's Santa Clara County, which to me is considered the heart of Silicon Valley. Driving around, you'll feel how techy this area is as you see names of big tech companies on their buildings like Facebook, Netflix, Google, Intel, and more. But because the tech industry isn't just about silicon or semiconductors anymore and it's more about like digital products and services a lot of people tech companies employees have moved northwards to san francisco because a lot of them are looking for a vibrant city life so the term silicon valley these days to me is more synonymous with the san francisco bay area since it's more than just the south bay area now and while the ubiquity of tech varies depending on which part of the bay you go to, it definitely has a huge presence there. It's not uncommon to overhear conversations about the greatest technology or what companies have IPO'd or what the work culture is like at companies. And when you go to a bar in San Francisco, you're really likely to bump into a lot of young tech folks who moved from elsewhere. So it's kind of like another version of the gold rush for California. But is it still the case that it's the best place to go for a career in technology? Sure, the Bay Area's had a rich history of constant reinvention, being on the bleeding edge of challenging the status quo, and thus became the birthplace of many technologies and companies that redefined how we all interact with computing, but also a lot of people are leaving. The area saw a dramatic decrease in their population with the pandemic, 
with San Francisco seeing a 6.7% drop, the second biggest drop in the country at the time behind New York City. These statistics and analyses from a high level are really helpful to get an idea of the history and culture and trends that are happening, but I also wanted to get like a ground level view of what's going on. I interviewed a bunch of people, both who live in the Bay, who left the Bay, and never considered moving to the Bay to begin with. I've asked them all about their reasons for their decisions on where to live, as well as their thoughts about how things are changing for Silicon Valley. So why did these folks move to the Bay? The biggest draw for me to go to Silicon Valley was the opportunities. All the jobs were down here. First thing you notice is the sun. It seemed to me like something was happening in San Francisco. If you want to be queer in some place, like, you know, San Francisco is it. So yes, it's definitely the wealth of opportunities and the weather that draws a lot of people in. As far as the weather goes, which depending on which part of the Bay you're in, because there's like a lot of microclimates and stuff like that, year round is between 40 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And no, it doesn't snow. And there really are more opportunities in the Bay. In the first three months of 2021, $69 billion of US-based venture funds that invest in startups invested over a third in companies based in the Bay Area, which is a far larger slice than any other city in the US. So one way to interpret this is the more startups there are, the more jobs there are for you, which means more opportunities in tech. And separately from job opportunities, the culture of the tech industry in the Bay Area is unlike any other. Back when I was working there in 2015, 2016, every meetup you could imagine on every type of technology was happening all of the time. So after work, you could go to a meetup and you could meet a startup founder who was looking to hire someone just like you and had the coolest idea. Like I remember as a young iOS developer, I went to an iOS meetup and I was approached by someone who was starting a company that was doing uh, subtitles and conversations for hard of hearing and deaf folks to better be able to communicate with their friends and family. And I was like, Awesome. There is places out there that are like hacker clubs and stuff. And everywhere you go, no matter what day of the week, there will be some sort of mini conference for your type of engineering, whether that's payments or front end or something like that. You can get constantly educated in the nonstop highest tech stuff. Well, I have this belief that the most valuable thing we can possibly do at work is create connections to other people. I think that's literally how a company generates value. And I also think it's really what gives people the most satisfaction. I think it's possible to connect with people over video, but I don't think it's as easy. <laughs> and I also think that there's nothing quite like sharing a coffee or a beer or a meal with someone. Because we're talking about a large amount of money and it really is about building relationships. Even now being there in person kind of matters, like building relationships with these different companies, with these different investors, that matters. And it's mattering less now that we can talk like this over Zoom, but it still matters, right? Partly because it's a cultural thing and the, and the cultural changes are always gonna lag, you know, technology's ability for us to connect and communicate. As great as Zoom is, it's always better to meet in person. So like to build those relationships, to like make those deals, that's why it's there, right? But of course the ubiquity of tech and the types of people that come to the Bay for that reason expresses itself in many ways, sometimes in positives, I still think there's something utopian about the Bay Area. You know, even the architecture, that new Salesforce tower, it just it looks like a spaceship to me. And I love that. In my neighborhood, there are all these self-driving cars, you know, and sometimes without people in the front seat. I feel like whatever's happening here right now is gonna be happening everywhere in a couple of years. I, I do think that because this life of the city and, and technology are so intertwined, these things get get merged together. Like, you know, San Francisco had these rental scooters before anyone else did because the rental scooter company started in San Francisco. And sometimes in negatives. This happened in 2010. I was down for some interviews. The interviews were on a Friday and I stayed for the weekend. I hung out with some friends. We drove up to Yosemite and then came back late Saturday night. It was just a day trip. My friend drops me off at one of the Caltrain stations up in San Francisco, riding the train south. It's like 1230 in the morning. And I'm thinking about what a lovely day I had and I'm vaguely listening to all the chatter around me. I'm overhearing these little bits of conversations and it's all like, my billion dollar idea is this. Oh, well, I'm working at a startup at blah, blah, blah. We're working on this. Oh, my startup is in stealth mode. Blah, 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 blah. It's 12.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. And that's what these people have to talk about. Actually, this might've been my first real trip down there. 
And so it really, it really made an impression of, of just like, get a life. If that's really all you're thinking about all the time, on the one hand, mad respect. Like that's why lots of great companies get founded down there. But to me, that just feels like really out of balance and doesn't feel like a good way to set up my life. So I was riding a tech bus. So um, in Silicon Valley, there are a lot of people who live in San Francisco who want to commute down to the valley and they don't have cars. And so they run these buses back and forth. And at the time, the traffic was so bad that it was an hour and a half, sometimes two hours each direction. So I was spending 10 hours a week on a bus. I would be on the highway and I would look left and right and it was all buses. Like we were running our own train. Like you look at like the Metro or the, the subway and it felt like that, but just tech buses and just stop and go traffic. Homogenous, I was meeting everybody was the exact same. And I that everyone I met was a software engineer, or a product manager, or a CEO of their own startup, or trying to hire me or whatever. And I was having the same conversation with everybody that I met. And because these well-paid tech employees are really common in Silicon Valley, there's definitely this kind of constant pressure that you always want to be needing more stuff, like whether that's more money or more shares in a company or more space or a bigger house. This is the trouble when you live in an environment where where a lot of people are wealthy is you start thinking that that is how everyone lives and you start becoming dissatisfied with your you know meager 3000 square foot house silicon valley if you're not making a million plus bucks a year you probably look around and you think oh i live in a scruffy house and blah 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 right you lose all perspective that the median american family like makes as a household something like $75,000 per year i think that is the part that is really hard to deal with in a place like silicon valley is because you find that your happiness on this hedonic treadmill is constantly drifting as human standards of living just raise greatly. So there's a lot of pros and cons to life in the Bay Area, depending on what you're looking for. But with the rise of remote work culture as a result of the pandemic and the exodus out of the San Francisco Bay Area, what's changed about life in the Bay? Before we move on, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Formation. If you're an engineer with one to two years of experience looking to land top tier roles at companies like Facebook, Google, Lyft, Airbnb, and Twitch, then you should definitely check out the Formation Fellowship. It was founded by staff level engineers from Facebook and Nextdoor who interviewed thousands of candidates and wanted to create a better way to prep engineers to perform the best they can. Once you apply and get accepted into their three to six month program, you get a training plan that's personalized to your specific skill gap with direct mentorship from super senior engineers. And you can also get referred directly into top companies in the industry. You can do it part-time and they also offer an income share option so you can pay zero until you get the job. You can check out their program and apply for free at formation.dev slash Mayuko, also linked in the description box. Thank you again, Formation, for sponsoring. Now let's get back to the video. So one of the reasons to be in the Bay before the pandemic was because it quite literally was the place where it all happened. Meetups, conferences, coffee walks with your coworkers, meeting random company founders at random public places. But what about now? How has remote work actually impacted the culture in Silicon Valley? I think a big part of the pandemic accelerating people's movement throughout America has to do with that acceptance of remote work as maybe a lifestyle and not just a once a once a week sort of choice. Right? People are moving out. Most of the friends I talked to that are moving away, part of it is to buy the freedom that I bought by choosing not to move to Silicon Valley, which is the freedom eventually to maybe choose different, to work for different companies, maybe to choose not to even have to work for a tech company at some point. Some people I think move away because uh, for once people are vo voting with their feet when it comes to the type of city they want to live in. People are asking for more flexibility with hours because sometimes there's, you know, schooling issues or kid raising issues or a class that's going remote for a while or they get COVID for a while or like whatever happens there's just more reasons to sort of require flexibility a lot of the bigger companies have said like they're never going to go full back to the office like people at slack i, I see a lot of adjustment happening which is always going to be somewhat painful and the new normal hasn't quite sunk in yet here every single company says remote first or remote only and i think even if 
CEOs and stuff want to bring back tech to the office, their, their employees will just revolt and they'll just leave. And because programmers have that power, they could just say, no, I'm not going back. And so I think there's a permanent fundamental change there. I don't think it's ever really going to go back the way it was. And outside of work, what about life in the city? Because after all, the city that you work in is also the city that you live in too. San Francisco was sucking there for a little while. I mean, I, I felt like, uh, you know, the pandemic hit us really hard. We were one of the first areas to kind of get hit. Then, you know, we had that summer of, uh, I believe it was 2020, where we had the horrible air quality. There was that CZU fire burning uh, and the sun literally didn't come up on that September morning. I think that was horrible. And I, I'm a diehard San Francisco uh, native, but I was like, this is sucking. I, I really wonder where else I could be. I have to say, I started traveling again once the pandemic lightened up. And, you know, I, it seemed to me like San Francisco sucks and it's terrible, but it's better than anywhere else. And like everywhere else in the world, but especially so in the San Francisco Bay Area, the rising cost of living has been a huge factor for people to relocate. Housing prices is a big thing. And probably like me, they're looking for for a different balance. I don't know how true this is anymore. We actually had an interesting problem or noticed an interesting pattern. Like when I was working at Facebook and I was pretty heavily involved in hiring, we noticed that we basically couldn't get experienced engineers to move there to the Bay Area. We could get college hires to move there, but we couldn't get experienced engineers to move there. Not, be, not necessarily because they didn't want to or didn't want the job. It's because like, let's say you graduated from school or like you, you entered the tech industry and you went to Austin and maybe you bought a house and it's a nice house and you've got a nice standard of living there, right? And then you get a job at, offer at a place like Facebook or Google in Silicon Valley. If you sell your house in Austin, that's like a down payment on a house in in Silicon Valley. And and so your lifestyle, your, your, your quality of life is gonna change pretty dramatically. By virtue of being in Austin for five or 10 years, you've now basically priced yourself out of moving to Silicon Valley. As a college student, you can move there and share an apartment with some people and be fine. You, you, you're not yet adapted to a higher standard of living and you and you probably don't have you know a partner, maybe kids, like who knows, whatever, right? You can go there and immerse yourself in that culture and have a great time. But if you're an experienced engineer, unless you're independently wealthy already, because you've you know, you've sold a startup or something like you can't move there and maintain your same standard of living. So yes, the San Francisco Bay Area has not been immune to the effects of the pandemic, like everywhere else in the world. But with the pandemic starting to be treated more as an endemic in California, and with in-person interactions and returns to the office becoming increasingly more common this year, would it still be a good idea to move to the Bay if you're joining the tech industry right now? Despite what everybody else does on the internet, I try not to prescribe like overarching generic advice to everyone because each of you watching are different. You enjoy different things in life, you have different goals, you have different relationships with your family and friends, you come from different economic situations, and you want different things out of life. So to say that like, yes, you should move to the Bay Area, or like, no, you absolutely shouldn't move to the Bay Area, would quite frankly, I think, be like unhelpful because it doesn't take into account all of who you are. But if you are thinking about moving to the Bay Area or really anywhere else for that matter, I think there is a really important factor that you should think about before making your decision. And that's really to think about what you want in life. And no pressure, if you don't know what you want in life just yet, that's totally fine. Just maybe start thinking about it from different perspectives. In terms of your career, do you want to start a tech startup at some point? Do you want to maximize the pure number of opportunities you'll have in your career? What kinds of companies do you want to be working at? And what kinds of people do you want to work with? And in terms of your life, how do you want to be spending your nights and weekends? How much money do you want to have left over to spend after paying rent or mortgage or other life things? What kind of friends do you want to make? And how often do you want to hang out with them? If you have kids, how do you want them to grow up? There's a lot of questions you can ask yourself to figure out what's important to you. Because ultimately, designing and choosing a life that you want plays a huge part in your overall happiness. It's one of the reasons why people decide to move at all, like I did when I moved back to San Diego. Like many of my videos, the answer for whether you should move to the Bay Area or not is it depends. Once you figure out what you want in life and then think about what level of risk you're willing to take and what choices you're comfortable making, 
then hopefully the answer will become clearer to you. I'll leave you with the advice of the folks that I interviewed about whether they think you should move to the Bay. My approach has always been look for opportunities and take them, especially if you're young in your career. Don't be too picky about the opportunities uh, and don't try to optimize or maximize all the variables at once. Because the biggest thing that comes out of any experience, good or bad, is experience. And you know, you're gonna learn something from the people that you're around no matter where you are. And the things that end up really impacting your career are the things like a great boss, a lucky break in the market, something that changes about like you know the industry or a migration away from another service into your service, or maybe it's you know, seeing a flaming plane crashing into the ground as a startup and surviving. Maybe that's what you know really gives you the intuition to to be successful in the future. Five years ago, I would have said, make sure your first job is in Silicon Valley. Just try one job there, go to all the meetups, feel the buzz, be the center of things. But now I'm not sure I would say that because everybody's left and there isn't much of a buzz anymore. The different iterations of San Francisco. My mom grew up in like the 60s of San Francisco in the hippie movement. And then right after that, like there was the AIDS epidemic and like gay San Francisco as we know it. And then like fast forward, there was Silicon Valley. And then there was the startup scene, the tech bus, like monopoly. And then now there's the pandemic and I don't really know what's gonna happen next, but I think that San Francisco continually reinvents itself like every 20 years. And I'm really, really curious to see kind of what comes after this latest wave. And I think it could be really beautiful. I think I would tell someone starting out in their career to take a job at a prestigious tech company that's based in San Francisco or Silicon Valley and come here and try it out. Because I think, in, you know, walking in, just walking into the off, some of these office buildings is inspiring and exciting. And you may find that it's not for you, but you'll learn things and be infused with the spirit that you can take with you. I think having kids in San Francisco is a real question that you need to ask yourself. And even having kids anywhere in the Bay Area. But I do think that the, somehow the sort of living in the future, trying things and accelerating, it also affects the young people in San Francisco, maybe not in the best way. And I don't know if that's good for kids. So I think the calculus about what you're gonna do with your family is, is maybe separate from what San Francisco will do for you. And I think it's part of the reason why a lot of people move to SF or the Bay Area when they're young and then kind of leave after they get married and want to start a family. If your goal is to build a tech career, it's absolutely not the only place to go. I think there's a strong argument to be made for places like Seattle. And my advice for somebody who's trying to build a career is that they shouldn't just be trying to build a career, they should be trying to build a life. And they should choose based on what they value in terms of the whole life that they want to build. You have to pick something that's gonna work for the life that you want to build. And a career is one part of that. There are certainly a lot of ways to get into tech. You don't have to be in San Francisco to get a job in San Francisco. That's number one. In fact, I knew a person who applied to Microsoft just to get a free trip to Seattle. And <laughs> they will fly you out and they will wine and dine you, you know? I think it's very, very hard for me to say, and it's totally true, you can totally not work in San Francisco, but I can't give that advice because I think it's the best place to be if you're in tech. The, the pool here is pretty small. So like, you're always gonna be working with the same people. It's like going to like college and like, you know, there's all this comfort around it, but also like, this is the best place to get the best um, information and you're dealing with all the smartest people. If you're young and you just want to get really, really neck deep into tech, you can only be here. It really depends on your goals of what you want to do. If you want to start a startup these days, you should absolutely move to Silicon Valley. I imagine it's just like the actor or actress moving to Hollywood. You know, do you have to be in Hollywood to get into a movie? No, but you are near people who act Actors love each other. They're all the same types of people. You might get introduced to other people. You might meet directors, this whole thing. But then you think about what is your typical trope about the actor or actress who moved to Hollywood to make it big? The typical one is not a star is born and all of a sudden you're Lady Gaga singing on some huge television screen, right? The, the typical person's stereotype is you are waiting tables desperately trying to like look 
better than the person next to you waiting the next table, right? Constantly judging yourself for how much you fall short, complaining about imposter syndrome, right? Like that is your life is you are waiting tables, hoping you made it big like Lady Gaga, comparing yourself to the nearby people who are doing the exact same thing. And you got to ask yourself like, is that the life I want? happiness that is super important for people to realize that you know wherever they move they are buying themselves into a certain dynamic of what it might take the average person to be happy thank you so much for watching today's video and big thank you to daniel buster philip kate adam and sean for allowing me to interview you to learn more about the topic don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you'd like more videos like this one and i'll see you next time bye